This is Father Jim Corda. On behalf of your Catholic friends and neighbors in the Diocese of Youngstown, I invite you to join us for this celebration of the Holy Mass. Good morning, welcome to St. Paul's Monastery. Please rise. Hosanna to the Son of David. Oh, blessed is he, oh, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Rejoice. Good morning. We welcome all of you who are here at our chapel at St. Paul Monastery and those who are joining us over our ecumenical channel here in Northeast Ohio. And as we gather on this Palm Sunday, we gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. My dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal mystery, that is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. If you want to hold up your palms, then we'll bless the, you and the palms. The children of Jerusalem, they welcomed Christ the King. They carried olive branches and loudly praised Him. They spread their cloaks upon the road, loudly praised the Lord. Hosanna to the Son of David. Hosanna to the Son. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will arouse them. Morning after morning, 
He opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from the buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help. Therefore, I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God, something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Christ Jesus is Lord to the glory of God, the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, glory and praise, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ became obedient even to death on a cross. For this God bestowed his name above every name. Praise to you, glory and praise, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priest accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him, Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave him no further answer so that Pilate was amazed. Now, on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, Crucify him. Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, Hail, King of the Jews, and kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. 
Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. With him, the cru they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and say, aha, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, he saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is translated, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, look, he is calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink, saying, wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, truly this man was the son of God. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. All of us are very familiar with the picture of Palm Sunday of Jesus entering to Jerusalem. He is riding on a donkey and all these people are cheering him and shouting Hosanna and waving the palms and are very glad to have him to be part of the festivities of the feast of the Passover. But Jesus was not part of that festivity. He was one that was focused on his mission of doing the Father's will, knowing that he was coming to Jerusalem to suffer and die for all of us. So he wasn't waving, he wasn't smiling, he wasn't acknowledging those around him. And he also probably knew that some of those who were cheering him in the morning coming in on Palm Sunday were going to be yelling for crucifying him at the end of the week. So we are asked to reflect upon the journey to our own Jerusalem. We may be in going into an illness. We may be going into situations and difficulties, unforeseen circumstances that we are not aware of. And we may be frightened to be able to enter into these circumstances. But we know that the Lord who had gone to Jerusalem before us is walking with us now as we go into our own Jerusalem. He shows us how to enter into a relationship with the Lord. He shows us how we can call upon his grace, his love and his mercy and his forgiveness. And so as we journey through this whole week. Let us open up ourselves to the presence of the Lord. Let us journey with him on his only journey through his Paschal mystery, his suffering and his death. But ultimately, next Sunday, we celebrate uh, Easter. We celebrate the resurrection. We celebrate the gloriousness, knowing that the Lord continues to journey with us. So let us truly make this a holy week where the Lord journeys with us to Jerusalem and is with us every day of our life. Let us stand together now and share our profession of faith. This morning we will use the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Jesus turned to his Father in his final moments on the cross, and so we turn to God our Father in our need, secure in the knowledge that we are heard. For the church, that we may commend our lives to God each day and be renewed in the spirit of God's faithful presence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people of good will, that every heart may reject violence and force as a way to resolve conflict and seek new means of conciliation and healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For successful distribution of the COVID vaccines, that God will guide the delivery of the vaccines and assist all who are distributing and administering them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the homebound, that God will protect them renew their spirits, restore them to wholeness, and strengthen all caregivers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And as we pray this Mass, let us remember Kirsten Pepperini. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For also the victims of the Boulder, Colorado shootings, that Christ will welcome them to eternal joy and give peace to all who grieve their deaths, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Faithful and merciful God, your Son cried to you from the cross. We cry to you as we carry our crosses and assist each other with theirs. Listen to the prayers we make and grant them according to your will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice, made once for all, we may feel ready already the effects of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Hosanna, Hosanna in the 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
house grant us peace Lamb of God Behold the Lamb of God Behold him who takes away the sins of the world And blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion for those unable to be with us today. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Body of Christ. Amen. of the kingdom on Calvary Street. Behold the cross on which was hung life's very Lord, God's only Son, Mary's own babe, so cold and so still helpless before her on Calvary Hill. Let us pray. Nourish with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, 
Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Again, we thank all of you for joining us here this morning at our chapel at St. Paul Monastery, those joining us over our ecumenical channel here in Northeast Ohio. I thank our musician, thank our readers, encourage you to come and join us during uh, Holy Week. The uh, schedule's in the back if you didn't get one and you want to know our times. And also uh, pick up any extra palms that you want to take. Whatever's not here will end up out in the shrine and you can pick it up uh, later today or the rest of this week. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Lord, let me walk that lonely road with you under the weight of the wood. Lord, let me walk that last mile in your shoes under the weight of the wood. Freedom can be found down under the weight of the wood. Lord, let me cool your lips baked like clay under the 